Good evening and welcome back to Shenzhen IO where I don't have much left to do. I have the button that says uh, click and hold this button to indicate your readiness for Sun Hao Chan to uh, upload himself into the neural supercomputer below the city uh, and I'm building a printer. Um, so about that printer. Because, <laughs> um, like, it's getting so close, <laughs> but I definitely made this a tricky challenge. <laughs> um, so, the situation we'd reached here was essentially that we can correctly organize all of the outputs. But the um, the synchronization after send it, after moving the two components that need to be moved and before activating the hammer is really tricky to organize. Um, in particular because the, the processors that actually drive the various, outputs don't have very many xbus ports and so they can't um can't really talk to one another how adequately because the problem is that um that essentially this one wants to tell both of these two to start when when to start doing their next move and these two both want to tell this one when they've completed their move and they both want to do and they've all only got one xbus port to do this over and that's obviously inadequate um because essentially 
the the it's not possible for the outer processor that finishes its move first to distinguish the middle processor saying it's time for the next move from the other outer processor saying it's finished. Though I suppose arguably those are oh those are kind of related events, aren't they? Hmm. As in they're usually one time unit apart. Because usually it should be outer processor says I've finished, middle processor sets the hammer off, and then the then both outer processors can start doing things again. But the problem is that the outer processors don't know whether they're the first or the second one to finish. And it's not safe for them to... If they're the first one to finish, it's not safe for them to send a message saying that the other outer processors should do things. And if they are the first one... If they're the second one to finish, then obviously they do need to do that. Unless we can have some way in which the middle processor absorbs one but not both of those messages. But it isn't... But it does... Uh, oh. But then they can't... No, the outer ones then can't sleep appropriately. <laughs> so, yes... I don't think we can compress what we've got on the left here any more. Because there's basically the problem that we keep... I mean, I suppose... Actually, we can a bit, I think. Uh, oh, no. Actually, that this processor doesn't use X3, does it? That's just a track going through through it for convenience. I think we can get ourselves a bit more space, and this might help. So let's do a bit of geometry rearranging. So... Just making a note of how wheel is wired up before I start moving it. Um, and X2 is the other one that actually matters. Um, because what I think I want to do is to undo those connections. Yep, that wasn't right, sorry. So we can actually just connect up that one again as it was. It ignores X1. Um, and then it needs something connected to D0 on the RAM. And... And now it turns out weirdly that actually my problem is connecting this track up. Uh, it's not so bad actually. So we need to replace X1 with X3 and X2, sorry, X2 with X3 and X1 with X2. So X2 becomes X3.
and x1 becomes x2. So that, that makes things a bit more spacious in particular because I could then move that to um, sadly only there. But like that gives us just about enough space to insert an entire MC6000 in this gap. If that would be a helpful thing to do. So, can I do anything useful with that space, I wonder? Actually, we might even be able to make more space, because I reckon we could drop this in somewhere down here. Maybe not. No, maybe not. So, what do we actually want here then? So, our problem is in that synchronization business. So, in particular, our, ooh, our big problem is this processor here doesn't have enough XBus ports to talk to everything independently. But what if I were now to try to replace that with an MC6000 out here? Because then it could have separate X bus. Then it might be able to have separate X bus ports for each of for talking to each of these two. So what would then happen would be that it would. Uh, the problem is that it can't wait for whichever of them triggers first, though, can it? So that's even that is not really enough. In that it, it, you can sleep on one X bus, but of course it could be the same X bus that it uses to receive from both of them, except that, that that then gets us back to our earlier problem, that if they are both sending to the same X bus port on the middle processor, then they will that it must also be the XBus port they receive on from that processor because they've only got one spare XBus port each. Um, so that doesn't help very much. Um, so... Let's just get a better feel for what happens here. So essentially, we're after much faffing around, which I'm not even going to think about trying to understand now. Basically, I'm only interested in things from the, to the right of, like, this line here. Um... Uh, so, so we end up with, the RAM containing, uh, that RAM contains the necessary wheel movements. Um, and this one contains uh, carriage movements and line feeds or something like that. Let's see. Um, it contains two, which presumably is that two, and then one, which is that one. So what are those zeros all about? 
So it does Morv X naught ack and then so the what's going on there then? It waits for a signal from this one to say hello I'm ready. Um it then Alright, yes, that one is waiting on X1, which is the initial synchronisation signal. It then signals back down X0 to this one, saying it would like some information. This one reads from the RAM, where it will get a 0, checks if it's a 4, sends the next thing from the RAM, which is a 2, which is that 2 weight pulse there. Um, and then sends that zero. Oh right, yes, so the idea is that it receives either zero two or four zero and four zero indicates the uh, the carriage return there. So what I now ask is why doesn't that is that simply because we haven't finished loading up the RAM? Right, yes, that's what's happening. Every we we actually start processing before the RAM's completely full. So, and then the point is that those 0, 2 and 4, 0 get interpreted by that gen instruction um, to output either a high going pulse or a low going pulse. Um, so maybe I'll have to go back to into here if I want to change the precise data format that we're using there. And then this just ends up signalling back up to there saying we're done. So, in particular, for instance, the sum of those two numbers is the amount of time that this move will take. Though actually we don't care about the amount of time that, a, um, that the carriage return move takes. Um, and meanwhile this one just gets like 3 or minus 4 and engages in appropriate muckings about with the um, sign of that number to generate its output and uses gen and then has some idea of what time it is at the end. Um, so this one could trivially output on X1 an indication of how long it will take to do its move rather than giving an indication on X1 at the end that it has done its move. Um, This one similarly gets in ACK the length of its move for all relevant purposes. So both of these have a moment where I could insert a, an instruction to send the length of the current move somewhere. That's interesting. So how about, rather than sending things to X1 at the end of their move, they
send something to X1. During their move, just before they move. So now... This one can then receive both of those, and then it needs to do take the maximum of them. Um, so at the moment, let, let's see where that would go, come, and then see how many instructions it takes to do max on this processor. Uh, so this one goes, wait for X0 signal to x1 and that waits up both other processes and one of them reads yes i remember that trick um, then it's got this slx x1 mov x1 null so we want to and then slx x1 again and then gen thing so what we want to do instead is to have this do something involving so let's just make that really simple and then in here it wants to do blah 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 slurp ack we kind of hope Um, so, uh, how do we do that then? We There's only one register, that's kind of tricky. We can have one of one or both sides send this send their data more than once, which immediately makes me feel like the standard C problem that your mac, your min or max macro ends up having to evalu evaluate its arguments more than once. Um, and like yes, well actually I'm going to have to do that here. <laughs> I I can evaluate the arguments more than once, and that makes life a lot simpler. So I can do like more of x naught ack. Um, TGT um, X naught ack. Oh no, but I don't know which order they're going to send me their answers in. Uh, and I and they will both be sitting in a right immediately after this. So so it will be indeterminate which one set talks to me next. Curses! I can't tell which is which. Um, that won't work very well. Maybe I'm going to have to upgrade this processor to a bigger one. Uh, simply so that it can have a spare register. A slight problem that someone's parked a track across where I want my um, hammer to be wired up. Uh, right. Uh, 
attempted by Isidar outside to appreciate the crunch. Crunch. You're going to walk all over and flip, 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 aren't you? Um. I mean, strictly, I can, can, of course, just insert this processor here and have it, like, do various pass-through stuff, get a signal from the right saying, hello, please, can you calculate the maximum of these two numbers? And have it send back the maximum of those two numbers. Uh, uh, I think I have a horrible feeling that works. Um... When does this one stop jumping back to X, though? I'm slightly worried by that. Um, so there I'm essentially using this, this processor here to bridge this track. Um, waits for so I mean Flash, okay, like that. <laughs> I mean, the snowflake's quite good. Uh, I may have to go for a walk on the block, it's very nice up there. So, let's see if that does anything useful in its first pass. Um... So there's an awful lot of faffing around working out what's sticking to the RAM, but I want to actually see when X3 on the wheel processor sends something. Right. So, correctly, this has now received two and three there. Sends three back again. And correctly activates the hammer. And then I think we all jam up because no one really knows what to do then. <laughs> we've, got, we've, we've made progress. Um, So then the question is, 
how do how are these actually meant to count like their moves like when do they stop um because obviously we well we let, 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 if we don't worry about that for now we can just do the same thing in this process that we've done in that processor and something like this uh what oh no that has to then be that needs an slxx3 in order to cope with the fact that we might have to wait for the next one Okay, that hasn't quite worked. Where are we jammed now? Hello? Tell me who's stuck. And it looks like it's probably that one. Yes. So, what's meant to be happening is that these two... Right, so the problem is that these two are both waiting for a signal from x1 and we've removed all of the code that ever did any of that signaling yes that's the problem um so if we do something like that then that will probably wake them up to tell them that they need to do the next thing Look at that, we've made it somewhere. I mean, we crashed, but we've crashed at the end of the line. Um, so that's nice. Uh, right. So the general problem we have now... Um is that we really don't know what to do at the end of the line. So let's let's look through what each processor is going to do there. Actually, sorry, let's um, run up to the point where it all seizes up. Um, so, and we can see basically we have a little bit longer for returning the carriage and then we finished and then we have to reset everything for the ready for the next character um so slightly confused as to why the hammer fired it has fired again um so that's so this this processor here is notable for knowing when it's reached the end of the line because it's the one that generates the line feed um so whereas this one and this one and and even more so this one are simply sitting in a per character loop and the slight awkwardness is that it's really so that these one the, this is the one that actually says so that these ones do per character printing and this is the one that tells them and to a lesser extent this one when to do things um so Then the idea, then the, the, so what I think I really want is for this one to know when it needs to wait for another, we have, re, we, we have a new line ready for you to print signal from here. So the two possibilities, it seems to me, are one, it somehow counts characters 
or it gets some signal from down here because this one knows what line we're on but there are no obvious spare wire port ports on this chip to do this anyway So, so, what can we get out of this? Yeah, the problem is that it's the carriage control that really has the knowledge we want. Um, maybe we can thread it up through the that Xbus link. Uh, interesting. But this one know, knows when to return to there. But the problem is that it doesn't actually... If I'm remembering what it does right, it do with the wheel processor essentially does one cycle per character it prints. So it doesn't really know, that one doesn't really know when it's it knows when it's re reached the end of the line but it doesn't have a way of reading out of remembering how many things it's printed because it uses both ACK and DAT for various purposes I think it uses DAT ACK to remember where what position the wheel will be in and DAT to remember to as its working processor for like what character it's dealing with what what the next character it's dealing with is so it while it conveniently can send a signal saying well we've written something to the ram so we're so things are good um it doesn't really know how much it's written to the ram at that point um so i do really need to get that knowledge from down here somewhere So, um, so in particular, here we have a nice conditional on have we just reached the end of the line, which activates, in particular, activates the line feed. I was the first person to walk along the entirety of Woodlock Road. <laughs> So, is there something clever I can do? Like, because if we could have this one able to hear the line feed signal, then that will probably be good enough. But I don't think there's any sane way to wire that in. So I think it needs. So since we don't do any overprinting, we can be confident that if the signal we get back. No, that doesn't work. Uh, oh, yes. When this... On, on the last character... This one will send a zero. So what happens here... Um, 
a shot. I don't think I have. Is that we get zeros on both inputs. Now, one of those is actually a bit problematic because that means that this one has read one character to one byte too far in the RAM. And it can perfectly legitimately read a zero because if you print the same character twice in succession, you'll get a zero out of the RAM. Now we'll get that ex an example of that here, um, where you don't actually move the uh, daisy wheel because it's printing the same character twice. Um, but that seeing two zeros is surely since the only time we'll get a zero from the carriage processor the, the output to this processor is when it has reached the end of the line and this one will always give us a zero when it reaches the end of the line we can be confident that when this one sees two zeros when ack and dat are both zero um at this point uh then that indicates um that we have reached the end of the line so what in what way is that fact useful? Uh, and when do we want to know it? So first we have the entertaining thing that uh, this one obviously has a slight problem that it will that it needs to write slightly more to the RAM but let, let's not worry about that for now we can fix that in a bit. We've got an extra instruction spare in there. Uh, so what needs to happen at the end of the line is that we do a completely different sequence here because we need to do something which tells this chip to jump back to S that SLXX0 rather than sitting in this tight loop down here. And at the moment it just goes slurp x0 which is unhelpful and we do only have one spare instruction. But we, uh, oh god, no this might not be so bad because we could have so the current situation is that this one expects to receive the sleep length in x0 and then to generate a um, an output pulse. But we could instead have it receive a flag indicating whether it should generate a hammer pulse. Because obviously when you get the new line you don't. Um, and it could then conditionalise the rest of its functionality on that. Uh, so we go if x0 is some special sentinel value then don't do any of that and in particular don't do the jump x just fall straight through to here. Make it, um, so then this one then needs to do a rather complicated sequence of if x zero um, dat is zero and at um, is zero 
then send 1, 2, 3 to x3, else send 0 to x3. Right. That might help. So let's single step through the events that happen at line end. Right, there's my problem. We'll end up writing another thing out to X3, which we don't want to write out. So we should actually then jump back to the top. Because we're then ready for the next character. So let's step through this again. So that sends 100, the, the, this processor here sends 123 to that one. Those both jump up and sit in their first instructions. The line feed happens. And we're ready for the next character. So that's very close to being correct. I think... But the, the slight problem is that this point read pointer is one ahead of this right pointer, which is wrong. Um, but I think we can fix that really simply by going mov naught x2 and right and just advancing the right pointer by one at the same time well we got a reasonable distance through the second character second line um i wonder what went wrong this time then so we we've, we've successfully printed an entire number with a carriage return and a line feed at the end my printer can print the number 81. Wow. Um, it then correctly prints the number minus 1, but crashes at the end of the line. Uh, is this the line where it's going backwards instead of forwards? No, this, this printer always prints forwards. The, the neural printer printed backwards. Oh yes, of course. Too many printers. Uh, this one ha has the the simplification that it always prints in the same direction, but the complication that it doesn't always take the same amount of time to print a line. Because it, it, it because being a daisy wheel printer, it has to turn its daisy wheel to the right position for each character. And this might take differing amounts of time, depending on how far around the wheel it has to go. Um, so, why have you crashed there? Our problem is that the wheel output so we've what you're saying is you should never use this printer to print secret numbers where anyone can hear it uh, indeed not because there's a clear timing side channel I mean there's probably a fairly clear noise side channel anyway in that like, I bet the different num characters sound different as well But yes, um, in particular, if the uh, if the wheel rotation sounds different in the two directions, you can probably just read off the number it's printing. Um, yes. So, so I good, night. good night. So so so, why is this going wrong then? Um, is that that the the. Everything there is correct. So our problem is that having reached the end of the character, this one is trying to signal end of signal the length of its next character, but this one has already got stuck. Hang on, where did, what? 
I, I'm now seriously confused because I'm missing that X. We were meant to get an extra zero in there from that Mob Zero X2. Where did it go? Oh no, maybe I'm. No, of course, we got one zero. That's the correct number. So everyone is <coughs> sitting at the correct sleep instruction at the start of this of this line. They're all all of these output processors are sitting at their sleep instructions. The RAM, in e every case, the write pointer is lined up with the read pointer. Um, so it all looks good. And then we write into the RAM what I think is the correct data. Essentially, 2 minus 2 on the wheel processor. And we have to advance 2 characters to, get, to get up to where we want the minus sign to be. And, well, that's what my Lua code calculated as was, was correct anyway. And then we write an extra zero into the character, into the wheel RAM. So then the first printing character is two and... Uh, the various things from the carriage processor so both wheel and carriage take two instructions so we so this processor then signals to this one that there will be another character after this and that this one is going to take two time units Everything returns and then the hammer processor signals back to wheel and carriage that they should do the next thing. Both of them are sitting in an SLX at this point, so they both drop out of it correctly and one of them gets ready for the next thing. Well, they both get ready for the next thing. The next thing is move one carriage and move two wheel or move minus two wheel that takes one time two time units one carriage and minus two wheel So, ah, now we have a problem that the wheel processor is a little bit behind here. And hasn't dropped into its SLXX1 yet. I mean, this process here is not yet dropped into its SLXX1. And it's critical that it should drop into that before this one sends its signal to X3. And the problem is, it's already sent its signal to X3 at this point. Because that... What? No, that's not a problem. No, it hasn't sent its signal to X3, has it? Oh, damn, I pressed reset. Right, advance to the right point again. Right, so... We have just reached the time unit at which we fire the hammer for the next time. For the last time on this line. I think this is approaching... the um, a 
approaching where the problem is. So that's in the gen that generates the uh, pulse. These two are both sitting in SLXX1 waiting for that pulse to finish. Pulse finishes Movnal X1. Both of those two drop out and work out what they're doing next. This one concludes it's doing nothing at all and sends that knowledge into the middle processor. That one concludes that it's doing a line feed and sends that knowledge to the middle processor. The middle processor passes both of these facts on. Meanwhile... Oh! What, what are you doing reading again from the RAM? You... Did you pick up something on X1 that you shouldn't have? You got triggered by... Hang on. You got triggered by something you shouldn't have been triggered by. So the problem here is that the wheel processor concludes it has nothing to do. Signals this to the center processor. Does nothing... waits for um, the signal to say it should handle it should read the next character and instead is woken up by this processor signaling that it has um, that it's about to execute a line feed right Okay, how do we deal with this then? Because we don't, what we, yeah, um, because usually. I mean, this is actually going to be, in general, a problem if the wheel processor has a null movement, isn't it? That it will be waiting, it will have nothing to do um, But the interesting thing is that even when it has nothing to do, it can still sleep... Ooh! So we always have a one unit pause at the end of each character so it's perfectly safe for the wheel processor to include a slip one say here closer so everything went well and then it all flatlined in the last character Like we correctly printed 81 minus 1, 990. And then stopped when we should have been printing 696. I wonder why. It just did nothing. We sent it three numbers, it, uh, four numbers, and it printed three of them and then stopped.
But it's notably we, notable we have a very small gap here. We haven't tried a one-time unit gap between characters before, between lines before, but it should be okay. Like that, 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 that. They're all sleeping in the right place. Everyone, everyone is in what I think is the correct position. The round pointers are all aligned correctly. I, I have a horrible feeling there's something wrong in the decoding code. Cause like, how else can, what else could be going wrong here? So let's let's inspect the decoding code. 696 incoming. I'm not going to worry too much about the details. So they're definitely both writing things into their respective RAMs. And then nothing happens. It's as though this one just didn't detect the line feed or something. So let's check whether the line feed looks like it otherwise happened. Um, so what do we have in the RAM? We have on the wheel 5 minus 3, 3. That looks pretty good. And on the carriage um, we have... Uh, Daisy Wheel. <laughs> so, and the carriage processor has uh, zero one zero one zero one four zero. Um, so one, 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 and then there's a return somewhere out of beyond the end of time. So those both look correct. It, all the correct stuff has been coded into the RAM, but somehow the signal that should have woken up the... Uh, that should have woken up the processors that actually do the work didn't. So let's watch the wheel processor and see what it receives. So it starts by receiving 999 which is a space. Then it receives uh, 6, which is correct. Nine. Six, which is all correct. And then it receives 998. But why is that teaked at 998 conditional? I'm going to have to understand this code again. that condition that teak that 998 conditional well, surely whenever you get a line feed you're going to want to do that i'm going to say what the hell is that plus doing there and remove it and see if the program gets better or worse
Right, I hereby declare that that plus was a mistake. Oh, gods, it does something right at start-up. Did I really write that in there? <sighs> okay, why have those two got stuck? What? I have a horrible feeling. Okay, this may actually be a bug in the... In, well, either the spec or the simulator. Because at the start of the second time period... Um, of the second test... Uh, the... This processor here does SLXX1... And it is still sitting in that SLX X1, which I'm not sure is correct. I'm going to single step into the second test. It might be that I have to go back and do a tiny bit of sneaky lure hacking. If it turns out that this is actually, like, something that we can't sensibly handle. Right, so we're right at the start of this test. We re there is a zero incoming at the digit processor, which is sitting in an SLX X1. Okay, no, it successfully does MOV X1 DAT. Is DAT less than zero? No. Okay, no, this does actually appear like it might... I've got another bug that I'm going to have to deal with. Um, I was just slightly hoping that I could de declare this to be a simulator bug and work around it in the test code. But if it's not actually a simulator bug, then we'll have to uh, work around it in the act in the um, I actually have to handle this case. Uh, so then that's. Okay, so there is actually, of course, a bunch of stuff going on here. And then we got stuck. So, no, it does... I mean, I've, one problem I've got is that this processor is sitting in a slip here, and it obviously can't safely do that, and we're going to have to work out how the hell... Um, we deal with it. But at the moment, it, I'm beginning to suspect that we simply can't print zeros correctly. Um, but the thing is, we end up with nothing in the RAM. I mean, maybe if my code is so terrible it thinks that you print a zero by printing nothing, then that would happen. So... Let's see what arrives at the wheel processor in particular. And the carriage processor. Do we actually attempt to print any characters at all? I think we have to advance to one step before the end of the first test run for this. And I'm kind of tempted to insert that extra, a minimum sleep of one at the start, simply to um, make testing things easier, even though it is kind of cheating.
so wheel has received a 999 i.e. a space and another 999 and a third 999 that's correct we sh what we should be printing here is space 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 zero um, and so far we have had space 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 and then when we meant to be sending getting a zero which will actually cause something to be printed the system crashes instead right So, gods, I'm going to have to understand the input side of this again if I want to make this work. Uh, so, uh, right. No, not too late. I timed that perfectly. Uh, so the digit processor correctly sends a sign of uh, nine nine nine, which indicates space. And then it transmits zero, zero, zero correctly to the zero processor. Um, so I think this processor, as far as I can remember the spec of how this works internally, this processor is doing the correct thing. It transmits space to the sign processor and zero 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 to the zero processor whose job is as i recall to suppress leading zeros so then let's watch what the zero processor does with these things Loads up that zero. Checks if it is zero. It is zero. Ack is less than three. Write a space. Is this just an off by one error in the zero processor? I think it is. I think that should read two. I think this will still break, but it will break having written the correct thing to the RAM. Right. Uh, because now this has two zeros indicating don't move the wheel and end of line. This one has written 0, 3, advance three characters and fire the hammer, then return the carriage. So we've now got the correct thing in the rams. The problem is that slip one there, which I inserted in order to deal 
with a with the problem that this one this process would otherwise end up consuming things from the output interlinking X bus that it should not be consuming. But if we have something that happens a character that arrives right at the start of the time we want that we would ideally like that slip one not to happen so is there some way that we can arrange that that slip one does not happen at the start of time but does happen on those occasions it only has to happen on those occasions when we have not moved the wheel and those occasions when we have not moved the wheel will be when ack is not less than zero and therefore we are in condition minus which we are not when the processor starts up let's try that one Two tests passed successfully. Three tests passed successfully. Eighty tests passed successfully! Yes, my ludicrous specification for a daisy wheel printer, which I invented as, well, I think this might be about the right complexity, does turn out to be achievable. Tick. Probably. Um, so now, there is a tick there. Tick, custom specification, achieved, objective complete, create a custom specification and a working design for it. Could, could you even could you say print hello world? Oh yeah, absolutely. But, I thought that I, I, try, I did, had a couple of kind of slightly interesting things and then I had this idea and thought that looks like it might be just about achievable maybe like I don't know how I would do it but I, actually the trickiest thing was finding something interesting that would have about 80 time units of um of useful like stuff going on so I had kind of because there was a traffic light controller earlier that was really weird in that it assumed that all your cars stopped instantly um, and I thought, oh, we could do a proper traffic light controller, but actually those turn out to be terribly boring. They spend most of their time, like, just sitting there waiting for things to, waiting for time to pass. Um, so, yes, uh, we have email, great work creating a specification. Maybe one day you will take my job. <laughs> and Carl, you'll never retire, Jay. I won't allow it, <laughs> Jay. I've been doing this for almost 40 years, so maybe in a no after another 40 years I will get tired. So, uh, I suppose we could now press the final step. <coughs> because Sun Hao Qian has um, decided that, yes, he will be um, uploaded to the computer underneath hanging on suspended in the water below the city which i don't really think is a sensible plan but um on the other hand i don't really like if all else fails we turn him off i'm sure it won't go very badly wrong i will not lose access to any puzzles well no i've completed them all so upload yourself sun hao chan Nethans has been initiated. Upload is complete. Process of running very hot, very close to 100%. Have we heard anything? It's consuming massive amounts of power and nutrition. The activity is a positive sign, but it's difficult to tell if the patterns correspond to Sun's brain. Probably needs some time to stabilise. Usage is not levelling off at all. Still near full capacity. Irin is probably right. Sun needs to learn to think again using all of his new systems. Unfortunately, there's no way, no saying how long this adjustment process would take. Need to figure out a way to measure this. 
I'm sure we'll hear something in due time. For now, I am officially closing the Nethans project. Cameron will continue to monitor Sun's brain. The rest of you should move on to something else after ta taking a short break. Feel free to pursue whatever is interesting into you. If Sun's absence is prolonged, citizens empl citizen employees may ask if you know anything about what happened to him. I can take care of all messaging around that situation, so refer him to me if you wish. Alternatively, you may wish to we may let them know that Sun is not gone, just sleeping. And he is waiting again to awaken again when he is ready. So, uh, yes, what an odd ending. <laughs> I mean, like, officially the ending, of course, happened... Um, but kind of the real ending happened when we moved to um, Avalon City. You know, that's when the original game ended. It's certainly a less apocalyptic ending than Tis 100 had. Um, and yes, I'm free to work on anything that interests me, but I have kind of done all of the um, things, including building my daisy wheel printer, which is... I'm still quite impressed by the fact that I managed to come up with something that... Um, I mean, strictly, actually, what state did the Simon game get to? I think it was mostly working, wasn't it? Oh, yes, we got the... We got it playing tunes. Uh, yes, but it doesn't have a specification. Right. So it just is. I think Simon and I actually came up with it independently as an interesting thing to do. But. It does seem very spacious compared to um, <laughs> the printer driver. But part of that's because it actually wants to have a particular layout. Do I genuinely get that wrong, or is the pro device confused? Uh, so yes, yeah, strictly, I haven't. I've, I ha still have quite a lot of. Um, of. Uh, things that I wanted to accomplish with this that I haven't yet accomplished. Um, that it should wait for you to press a button before starting, um, that ideally the buttons and lights would be round the edges of the board and not in the middle. And that the... Um, that when you're pressing the buttons in response, 
it should play sounds just as though you're just a, like when it's um, playing out the, the uh, sequence to start with. But uh, I don't think that, I mean, it's, oh, maybe I can do a bit. But on the other hand, what's the weather forecast for tomorrow? Is it going to be freezing in the morning? Because maybe I should do something about, like, making the pavement not disastrous. Uh, it's going to be minus three, minus two, minus three, we reach zero at 2 p.m. Right, okay, so someone should probably clear off the pavement. We don't get above zero all day. Yeah. Um, so yes, there's certainly an argument that I should not work on this and should instead go outside with a broom or some salt or both. So yeah, maybe not do that now. Anyway, so yes, um, I think I've more or less finished Shenzhen I over that. Um, even though this project is not quite finished. But this one doesn't have a spec, so I can claim it's close enough. So, yes, um, that was Shenzhen IO. Uh, I have no idea what I'll do next. Maybe, I'll, maybe I've forgotten enough of my second playthrough of TIS 100 to do a third one. Uh, but, yes, interesting in its own right. So, uh, good night all. I haven't seen anything from anyone on IRC. I do hope this is actually going out. Anyway, good night.